Apple held a big event Wednesday to unveil a handful of new devices, including three new iPhones and a new Apple Watch. The new Apple Watch and iPhones were everything that everyone thought they would be, based on reports no major surprises. Apple had no other surprises and didn't make some announcements that many were expecting. While it wasn't mentioned at the event, Apple that same day also quietly retired a handful of older devices, including the iPhone 6S and the iPhone SE, and the company removed all mentions of its planned AirPower wireless charger, announced last year, from its website. I've been watching Apple events as part of my job for almost a decade. And Wednesday's event in Cupertino, California, where Apple unveiled the iPhone XS, the iPhone XR, and the Apple Watch Series 4, has to be one of the more disappointing ones. First of all, it's important to note that Apple events are kind of in their own category. Even a yawn-inducing Apple event like Wednesday's launch is better than most events or conferences thrown by rival tech companies, which are typically slow, boring affairs that usually reveal some kind of fundamental disconnect with their audience. Apple's keynote was not bad by any means, but this iPhone launch felt different than past events have. It's not as if iPhone details leaking before the official announcement is anything new, but we still didn't get any of the magic Apple normally turns out for its iPhone events. We knew about the fingerprint sensor coming in the iPhone 5S before it was announced, for instance, but seeing it in action at its unveiling was a real wow moment. Even the iPhone 6S, which was a very modest improvement over the iPhone 6, introduced 3D Touch, which has become a relatively useful feature I use it all the time to turn on my flashlight from my lock screen, just by pushing into the left corner of the display. With the new iPhone XS, the biggest real difference from last year's iPhone X is a dual SIM card system, which you'll find either essential or unnecessary, and a camera feature that allows you to change the bokeh, or blur effect, on your portrait photos after they're taken. It's a cool trick. No doubt. But I don't take that many portrait photos. And it's unfortunately one of the only notable differences between this year's lineup and last year's iPhone X.